Vampires and werewolves have feelings too. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 couples in the Vampire Diaries. You're the liar, Lena. There is something going on between the two of us, and you know it. And you're lying to me, and you're lying to Stefan, and most of all, you're lying to yourself. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at various romances from The Vampire Diaries to determine which couples made the biggest impression. Please note that the spin-off series The Originals will not be taken into consideration, and that there may be spoilers concerning the destiny of the couples. You don't get to make that decision for me. If you walk away, it's for you, because I know what I want. Number 10, Bonnie and Jeremy. I'm not a kid anymore, Bonnie. I love right home. Some things simply aren't meant to be, and this relationship is one such example. Enjoying an on-again, off-again romance for the best part of five seasons, Bonnie, a witch, and Jeremy the Hunter go through a lot together, despite the fact that the pair rarely feel like a complimentary match. With everything that's going on, you know, and curses and sacrifice. Enough already. Bonnie's earnest nature often prevents Jeremy from spiraling out of control. However, the hunter seemingly has some emotional maturing to do before pursuing a serious relationship. No, I'm serious, Bonnie. Like, the only witch that could have given you your powers back is dead. And I think you have a serious case of denial going, and I, I want you to know that I'm here for you no matter what, and I'm not... Bonnie and Jeremy might not have been perfect for each other, but Baramie helped both characters grow as people. And that means something regardless of them not being endgame. So this is it? Because there were a million things I wanted to say to you, but now nothing seems quite right. And don't say anything. Number 9. Caroline and Tyler. I've already been there once with you, okay? And you said no. You shut me down. I'm not going back there again unless you make it crystal clear that- Initially, this female vampire and male werewolf bond over a mutual distaste for each other. However, Cupid starts to work his magic after Caroline supports Tyler during the guy's wolfing out party. A strong friendship gives way to an intense romance filled with sexual tension and emotional depth. You have no idea how much I've missed you. Caroline and Tyler go from strongly disliking each other to freely putting themselves in harm's way to protect their partner. Unfortunately, the involvement of Klaus ultimately derails Forwood. But for quite a few years, Caroline and Tyler had really explosive chemistry. Mm, at some point, we are going to do this in an actual bed, right? <laughs> yes, I promise. Once I figure out how to do a Klaus. Number eight. Catherine and Stefan and Damon. The three of us together are just like old times. The brother who loved me too much and the one that didn't love me enough. And the evil slut vampire who only loved herself. Hey, we never said that they had to be good for each other. Toxic couples make for compelling TV. As Alina's doppelganger, Catherine looks exactly the same as the Vampire Diaries' leading lady, but the similarities end there. I've never met a woman quite like you. Conniving, cruel, and always looking out for number one, Catherine simultaneously dates and manipulates both Salvatore brothers, eventually turning Stefan and Damon into vampires, and more importantly, against each other. Come on, kiss me or kill me. Which will it be, Damon? We both know that you're only capable of one. Catherine's relationships with Stefan and Damon are, at the best of times, complicated. At worst, downright abusive. Catherine. At least I fooled one of you. As far as love triangles are concerned, this one made for some mightily entertaining television. It was always death. Number 7. Caroline and Klaus. He's your first love. I intend to be your last. A near indestructible villain with a wicked sense of humor, Klaus's humanity only really begins to shine through once Caroline steps into the picture. In season three, the typically hostile Klaus reveals a softer touch around an injured Caroline, implying there is more to the vampire werewolf hybrid than meets the eye. There you go, Have at it. <laughs> Caroline waits quite a while before reciprocating Klaus's feelings, but eventually accepts the reformed villain, 
technically these two are never officially a couple. But Klaus and Caroline's bond transcends conventional love or marriage certificates. I will walk away and I will never come back. I promise. It's utterly unique and all the more compelling as a result. Number six, Joe and Alaric. I want you to be a gentleman and get me the hell out of here because we are way too old for this party and I need a drink. Stat. It's amazing how much can happen in just a single season. In the span of a few months, Joe and Alaric start dating, fall in love, become pregnant, and plan a wedding. But this isn't a pity proposal, Joe. I love you. Such a rushed relationship runs the risk of falling flat, but the couple's natural rapport sells the romance, making the quick progression feel totally natural. Okay, so I've got a few. You ready? Actually, I thought about it. And anyone named Alaric should not be allowed to name another human. By season six, Alaric has already been through several love interests, but Joe is the real deal. Besides making for an adorable ship, their relationship feels significant due to the couple tying into the broader Gemini Coven storyline, as well as the sixth season's Big Bad. I promise to be with you and love you and to dodge fate with you. Number five, Rebecca and Matt. The first rule of truly living. Do the thing you're most afraid of. Putting aside that whole kill Matt to hurt Elena thing, Rebecca is absolutely crazy over Mystic Falls' kindest resident. I thought about what you said about being good, and you're right. It won't be easy, but it's worth trying. One is a vampire who wishes more than anything to become mortal, while the other is the humanest human to ever human. Together, Rebecca and Matt offer a never-ending stream of one-night stands, heartwarming banter, and heartbreaking moments. I thought we said no strings. I said there were strings. With humans growing increasingly hard to come by in Mystic Falls, Matt relates to Rebecca's feelings of isolation and loneliness, as both characters struggle to find a place to call home. Don't call. Don't write. And whatever you do, don't you dare miss me. Number four, Elena and Stefan. Stefan, I love you. The romance responsible for launching the Vampire Diaries, Stelena seemed destined to serve as the show's ultimate couple. Even though things work out somewhat differently, Elena and Stefan share a passionate, albeit complex relationship that lasts for a number of years. When Catherine returns and causes Stefan to temporarily join the dark side, Elena is there to bring the vampire back from the brink. Stefan, for his part, is almost always there for her. It's you and me, Stefan. Always. Regardless of their ultimate relationship status, Stefan and Elena support each other through thick and thin, and that's more than most exes can say. I never thought I would ever be happy again, and then, and then I met you. You changed everything for me. And you, you quite literally saved my life. Number three, Bonnie and Enzo. After all this time, I think I'm finally starting to understand you. Did anyone see this couple coming? For an introduction, Enzo threatened to kill Bonnie's boyfriend, so the vampire hardly made the greatest first impression. Who the hell are you? I'm the one who gets people to do things I don't want to do. <laughs> uh! Out of nowhere in season seven, a flash forward shows Bonnie and Enzo smooching in a cabin. In order to elude the armory's goons, Enzo and Bonnie are forced to go on the run for years. The formerly at odds couple steadily begin to trust and love each other. Enzo's rough exterior masks a passionate person who has been repeatedly hurt, while Bonnie deserves an epic romance characterized by unconditional love. In each other, Bonnie and Enzo unexpectedly found exactly what they needed. You're an incurable romantic, aren't you? When it comes to you, love, I would never stop fighting. Number two, Caroline and Stefan. Maybe today will be better. Yeah. Love is a marathon, not a sprint. As Elena's best friend and lover, Caroline and Stefan end up spending a significant amount of time together. I think that someday you'll meet someone new and you'll fall madly in love and you'll have moved on without even realizing it. Due to both being involved in serious relationships throughout the majority of the series, the couple act more like siblings than prospective lovers. 
In fact, Stefan assumes a mentor role once Caroline transforms into a vampire. Isn't killing cute defenseless animals the first step in becoming a serial killer? Well, you sort of skipped serial killer and went straight to vampire. By the time they became a thing, Stefan and Caroline shared an intimate connection stemming from a years-long friendship. Stefan and Caroline are best friends before lovers. And really, doesn't that make for the best kind of couple? I want you. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. You look amazing. What are you doing here? I was thinking maybe I could make one more wrong choice today. I still have 17 minutes. Please. Don't leave me alone. Rick, I, I wasn't expecting you and Elena to later. Number 1. Elena and Damon There can only be one. The Vampire Diaries is all about Elena's love triangle with the Salvatore brothers. Unabashedly evil when introduced, Damon is initially regarded as a lost cause by nearly everyone, but Elena believes the vampire can be saved. Delena fans watched anxiously for three seasons before Damon finally earned a moment in the spotlight, but the couple's chemistry justified the wait. Defined by a fiery passion that threatened to consume both lovers, Delena forced Elena and Damon to take a long, hard look at themselves. Promise me this is forever. I promise. In Elena, Damon found a reason to strive to become a better person. In turn, Elena found her soulmate. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. Loki, Loki.